case. Uh, James Bess was last seen October the 4th, 1984 from Ashland, Kentucky. James was born December the 18th, 1969. He would now be 53. He is a black male with brown hair and brown eyes. At the time of his disappearance, he was 5 foot 6 and weighed 110 pounds. James' photo is shown to age progression. He and Chipley Sanders were last seen together at, at a home in the 1300 block of 13th Street in Ashland, Kentucky. Their whereabouts are still unknown. James has a scar on the right side of his waist and his eyes are grayish. Chipley has a pale birthmark on his back over his left shoulder. And here is Chipley. Um, Chipley was born April the 10th, 1971. He is a white male with brown hair and brown eyes. At the time of his disappearance, he was 5'5 five five and 150 pounds. These boys were around 12 or 13 years old when they went missing or something happened to them together because they were last seen together. I don't know the circumstances. Um, Charlie Project. There's pictures here of age progression of Chipley Sanders. They believe him to have been a runaway. Of course, you know. Now, here's some information that I just came upon that makes this thing a little bit more... Um, not, I don't know if it adds to the mystery or takes away from the mystery. Chipley and James Bess were both boys who lived in a group home. Now, the reason that I say that is because we know that children who are from foster homes, group homes, um, certain other situations like that are more at risk. It could be that... And this is, I'm not, a, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. I'm just saying, I'm speculating here that it's possible. We've heard of this happening before, that these boys are just kind of written off of the books, you know. Um, human trafficking, it's what we would call it today. Uh, sex trafficking or human trafficking, we might call it today. Back then, they probably didn't call it that. And did they do any investigations into whoever it was that was running this group home to see if these boys actually were runaways or if there was something going on there? If they had been, you know, because for them to be in a group home, it's possible that they were either in some, had been into some kind of trouble or were foster children who ended up there. Chipley and one of his siblings were ad adopted by a Radcliffe couple in 1980, but Chipley was sent to the group home in 1983. So it's possible that he had, you know, had some troubles in his life. And so this is from Reddit, Unresolved Mysteries. While I was grocery shopping in November, this is from the user Famous. Ohio Applehorn, and this was posted five years ago. While I was grocery shopping in November, I noticed a poster for the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children for two young boys named Chipley and James. I saw the poster a couple of su subsequent trips to this grocery store, and it got to me enough that I took a picture of it, so I remember to look their case up later. I was saddened to learn of their disappearance because I immediately thought of the abused boys from the former Florida home for boys. I've tried to find out what I could about their case, but here is all I could find so far. On Thursday, October the 4th, 1984, 12-year-old Chipley Charles Sanders and 14-year-old James Eric Bess ran away from a boys' group home in the 1300 block of Ashland, Kentucky. 
Some sites list them as definitely running away, while others say they were suspected to have run away. Um, James was last seen wearing a blue denim jacket, a sports t-shirt, blue jeans, and gray sneakers. So now it says here that Chipley was last seen in Radcliffe in Hardin County. Um, the two towns are three and a half hours, 255 miles apart by car. Both boys were classified as endangered missing. But on the other poster that I just read, they were listed as runaway. Other than the information above, I could not find much about Chipley and James's disappearance. Even newspapers.com was a bust. There's usually more sources for these missing persons cases, but when I googled them, I came across this mugshot for a white male who goes by the name James Eric Bess and James Edward Bess in Pulaski County, Kentucky. Obviously, James Bess is probably a fairly common name, but it struck me that he looked an awful lot like Chipley Sanders, and sometimes runaways will use an old friend or family member's name as an alias. Chipley Sanders, if this mug shot were Chipley, it means that he is alive, or it's just a huge coincidence. How did James and Chipley end up 255 miles away from Ashland after running away from a group home? Did Chipley and James have help running away? Well, it would certainly appear that they did. How, how far apart in days were they seen, or was Chipley at least seen, in Radcliffe? Um, did something more sinister happen at the home? This, this mugshot is from 2021. James Eric Bess. He is a white male and 36 years old, 5 foot 11, 148 pounds, with brown hair and unknown eye color. His address is listed as Stanford, Kentucky. And it just says that um, they don't really have a reason why he was arrested here. This person that came across this mugshot believes it's possible that this could be Chipley Sanders who had changed his name. But how, how would he have survived, you know, without social security number and things like that? I don't know. I've searched for more information on these two uh, missing people, and I came up with a little bit of information from Reddit. Um, I'm not sure how true it is, but I'm just going by what is posted there. And apparently, according to the post, these are family members. Um, James Bess, it was reported that his mother spotted him in the audience on a TV show called The People's Court, and she recognized him. Now, the show is filmed in New York, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back through this and read. I don't know how true any of that is. Like I said, I'm just... Um, this is um, from a user on Reddit. Chipley Sanders is my husband's uncle that he never met. The guy in the mugshot does look a lot like him. We hired a, a private investigator and we couldn't find any information about him. Chipley's social security number has never been used. We believe that he is long gone. Um... Someone else asked the question. Someone else posted that they were from Ironton, Ohio, which is across the river from Iceland, 
and asked the question, did the police or anyone ever search the Ohio River? Um, was it possible that maybe the two boys had ran off from the home and um, there, there were barges on the Ohio River in Ashland, Kentucky? Is it possible that they may have um, got, gotten on a barge? Those are just some different speculations that people are asking. Message on a message board from 2008. This is a, a, it's supposed to be this Chipley's brother. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt here and say that it is the brother. Chipley Dale Lay. My brother, Chip Sanders, which was his name after he was adopted, was born April the 10th, 1971, in Bowling Green, Kentucky, to Rayburn and Sheila Lay. We were adopted in 1980 by Charles and Veronica Sanders from Radcliffe, Kentucky. He just had a hard time, and maybe that was the reason he was sent there. They don't really give a reason why he was sent away. Um, but he was supposedly last spotted in Radcliffe, Kentucky. So is it possible that he had gone back there because that was the only that was the last home that he knew and his sister was there? And is it possible that he had gone back there? And maybe he ran away from there. These are just some speculations, some different comments on Reddit. Um, Chip was placed in the boys' home in Ashland, Kentucky in 1983. He later, he later ran away from the place with another boy named James Bess. They have both been missing ever since. And this is on the Unresolved Mysteries thread on Reddit. So, if one was spotted, supposedly spotted in New York, the other supposedly spotted in Radcliffe, did the two boys actually run away together? And did they, how long did they stay together before they went their separate ways? Nobody has any answers for this. This is the only other thing I could find, and this was... Um, This is supposedly, and I'm, like I said, I'm giving these people the benefit of the doubt. And if these are stories are made up, then, you know, I'm just, um, first and foremost, thank you for your research. James Eric Bess was a delinquent child. He was sent to the home for disciplinary reasons. He was only there about two weeks, and my mother called to see about coming to visit him. At that time, she was informed that he was no longer there. No one even called to tell her when he left. It pains me to think that they were hurt by someone at that home and discarded. So he was only there about two weeks when he disappeared. How long after he disappeared did the mother call to get a visit? And was it? the next day or a week or two weeks later. A couple of people have suggested that his mother called about getting a visit because she knew that he had run away. Some people are speculating that he had returned to the area where his home was at and was checking in, having his mother to call to check in to throw them off that maybe he wasn't with her or back in his home. That's just another speculation. Um, my mom took a DNA test last year to put into the databases. Before my brother was sent to the home, it is believed that he may have had a baby on the way. Yes, I know that's a really young age. He was about 13, or, well... I think he was 14 when he left the home, so about 14. 
This is, I think, one of the reasons why he was sent to the home. Um, every day after school, he would send me and my other brother outside while he brought a girl to our house. One day, my mom came home and caught them having sex. We don't remember the girl's name, but we did hear rumors that she had that she was pregnant. I may have a niece or nephew out there somewhere. Uh, this this was dated recently. This was nine months ago, so basically 2022. My mom will be 69 years old in August. I pray that she will soon get answers. We lived in Lexington, Kentucky at the time that this t happened. Now think about this. Lexington is about an hour, hour and a half from um, Ashland. Radcliffe is probably another hour from there. So, could it be that the two boys did travel and James went to went back to Lexington and Chipley continued on to Radcliffe? N there's no responses or anything here from the adopted family or the biological parents of Chipley. Only comments from his sister. Some people suggest that there was a cover-up by the group home. Um, I don't know how it would have worked at that time. I'm sure the two boys being placed there were probably... Um, it was probably through the courts in some way. So where they contacted was the social worker and the courts contacted. And wouldn't it have been up to them to contact the people, the families? So I don't know. That was that would have been my question was, did the group home contact the social workers and the courts that had placed these two boys there? And were there ever any other disappearances from that home of any other children? Chipley and his siblings were adopted by a couple in Radcliffe, Kentucky in 1980, and he was sent to the group home in 1981. So he had been at the group home longer than the other boy. Um... I was trying to go back through here and find I personally do not believe that the mugshot of this man from Somerset, Kentucky is the same person. They continue to say people continue to comment that these two boys were best friends. But if James had only been at the group home for about two weeks, maybe they did become very good friends during those two weeks that he was there. But people suggested that maybe Chipley adopted James's name and just took over kind of like his, and was using his name because that was the last person, you know, really that he knew. They're asking the question about DNA samples, and yes, the family members have given their DNA. Um, that's really all there is about it. They would both be in... Um, They would both be in their early 50s, about 53, 54 right now. And uh, that's really all there is on this. This was dated October the 17th, 2020. So they would be 52 and 53 years old today. If anyone has any information about them, you can contact the Ashland, Kentucky Police Department at 606-327-2020.
Thanks for watching.